hurricanes is coming from an unlikely source. It's sharks swimming beneath the hurricane. Researchers at the University of Miami tagged hundreds of sharks and tarpons in the Gulf of Mexico with sensors that fed back data via satellite. Now these sensors, they detect water temperature, depth, and conductivity. Now the research found that sharks flock to water near about 80 degrees. That's the same critical water temperature at which tropical storms need to form. So if enough fish are tagged, hurricane models could one day draw from a rich source of mobile data points that hover near the storm. What it amounts to is extra data points that they can put into the models that, that we have right now. Collectively, um, this could be an important tool to help enhance what we already have in place. Now, scientists say the data from at least 100 of the tagged sharks so far is already providing insight into where the warmest ocean currents are occurring. Now, this could help predict where hurricanes could intensify the greatest. The warm water also brings sharks into more regular contact with the humans. Now, researchers are warning attacks are on the rise. Now, the Carolina coast is a hot spot. 14 shark bites up and down the coast just over the last two years. In fact, the Carolinas are in the top five the whole country behind places like Florida, Hawaii, and California. So what should you do if you encounter a shark? NBC Charlotte's Bill McGinty talked to experts to get that answer. When we head to the water, a possible shark encounter is always on our minds. Look under this video is from the pier at Myrtle Beach this month. Sharks in the surf and extremely close to the beach. The injury on this woman's foot is from a shark bite at Folly Beach, also this month. She was surfing, just sitting on her surfboard, waiting for a wave. It felt like someone was pulling me. And then there's Patrick Thornton from Ballantyne, bitten by a bull shark or a black tip at the Outer Banks a few years ago. He was in the water body surfing after a storm. It put puncture wounds in my back. Patrick told me the shark just kept coming at him. His sister was watching from the beach and told me it literally jumped out of the water at him. But he did what you are supposed to do if you ever find yourself on the business end of a shark. He was wrapped around me, so I started hitting him on the side. And then I used my elbow, too, to kind of jar him loose. Amanda Brewer swims with sharks, both in cages and out. They're so graceful. They're so intelligent. They're so misunderstood. Amanda is a shark conservationist and gets about as close as you'd ever want to get. In fact, she took this picture of this great white shark. She too says, fight, punch, kick, and go for the eyes if you are being bitten. If you kind of are just laying back and, and letting it happen, um, they could mistake you further for prey. But if you're fighting back, um, then they're likely going to let go and keep moving. Most shark attacks are mistakes, the result of murky or stirred up water and just bad timing. If you happen to see a shark, don't freak out and don't make sudden splashy movements to get out of the water or back up on a boat. Most shark bites happen in only three feet of water. So how do you avoid an unwanted encounter? Well, don't swim when sharks are active. The experts say early morning and late evening, a bad idea. Don't swim near a pier where people are fishing and chumming the water. And be leery of swimming near sandbars and inlets. That's where the sharks are hanging out for fish to eat. So if you're swimming in areas like that, then you're definitely increasing your risk of, of an encounter. Thanks, Bill. Two more things to consider. One, don't walk your dog in the water